This investigation starts in this very unusual pool. It's not a swimming pool. In fact, it's impossible to swim here. But it is possible to have a lovely cup of tea. The water in this pool has a remarkable effect. It's extremely floaty or buoyant. I'm here to investigate why it has such a strange effect. As I dry off here, look what's left behind. Salt. This pool is filled with very salty water. It's called brine. The brine comes from a nearby underground lake here in Droitwich, which is ten times saltier than the sea. I'm not the only one enjoying a float in the brine. Ken here looks pretty relaxed in his tank of brine too. The brine is pushing up with an upthrust force exactly equal to his weight. But Ken's identical twin brother, Kevin, gets the freshwater treatment. In freshwater, the upthrust is less than Kevin's weight. So he sinks. Sorry, Kevin. So, why is the upthrust in fresh water so much less than the upthrust in brine? When an object is immersed in water, it pushes some water out of the way. You can see the water level rise in the tank. The objects displaced some water. The same thing happens here. By catching the displaced water as it spills out of the beaker, we can find out exactly how much water Kevin has displaced. The volume of water displaced equals the volume of Kevin. This displaced water is very important. This beaker contains exactly the same amount of brine that Ken displaces when he floats. It's less than his volume because not all of Ken is underwater. The weight of this displaced brine equals the upthrust force of floating Ken. Watch. Remember, the reason Ken floats is the upthrust force equals his weight. The force is balance. The upthrust force equals the weight of the displaced brine. In the fresh water, Kevin displaces this much water. But the fresh water is not as heavy as Kevin. Look. So the upthrust force in the fresh water is less than his weight, so he sinks. of brine is heavier than the same volume of fresh water. 